So let's discuss the questions of exercise 1.4 now. The first question classify the following as rational or irrational. So we got a good idea of what are rational numbers and irrational. So this is going to be quite easy. So 2 minus root 5, see here, 2 is a rational number and root 5 is an irrational number. So 2 minus root 5, the result is going to be irrational, right? Because root 5, the value is non-terminating and non-repeating. And what's going to happen is that when you subtract a rational and irrational number, you will get irrational. Here, 3 plus root 23 minus root 23. When I open the bracket, what will happen? 3 plus root 23 minus root 23. The root 23 is getting cancelled and we get only 3. Now, this is a natural number and all natural numbers are rational. So, here this is going to be a rational number. Part 3, 2 root 7 by 7, root 7, root 7 is getting cancelled and we are getting 2 by 7. This is a fraction and all fractions are again rational. So, this is rational. 1 by root 2, again this is rational and this is irrational. So, rational by rational, we are going to get irrational number here because root 2 is non-terminating, non-repeating. It is irrational. So, the ultimate value will be irrational. 2 into pi. Now, pi is an irrational number. So, if I am multiplying irrational with 2, 2 is a rational number, I am going to get irrational. So, this is how we classify this as rational or irrational. Okay. So, this can come in MCQ and one mark questions. Then we have question number 2. Simplify the following. 3 plus root 3 into 2 plus root 2. So, here we will have to multiply this. Okay. So, 3 plus root 3 into 2 plus root 2 means each term will be multiplied with each. So, first I am going to multiply 3 with 2. I am going to get 6. Then I am going to multiply 3 with root 2. I am going to get 3 root 2. Then I am going to multiply root 3 with 2. I will get 2 root 3. And root 3 into root 2, I will get root 6. So, this is going to be my answer number 1. We cannot simplify this further because there are no like terms. So, this will remain as it is. Part 2, this is in the form of an identity A plus B into A minus B, which you have done last year. So, A plus B into A minus B will give us A square minus B square. This is A and this is B. So, the first number is 3. So, we get A square minus B square. So, that's going to be 3 square minus, when I square root 3, I'm going to get 3 itself, right? Root 3 into root 3 is 3. This will be 9 minus 3. So, we get the final answer as 6. This is another identity, A plus B whole square. Now, we know that A plus B whole square is A square plus B square plus 2AB. I'm going to use this here. A plus B whole square is A square B square 2AB. So, root 5 plus root 2 whole square will be, this is A, this is B. Root 5 square plus root 2 square plus 2 into root 5 into root 2. So, this is going to be, root 5 square is 5, root 2 square is 2 plus 2 root 10 because root 5 into root 2 is root 10. So, answer will come 5 plus 2, 7. These are like terms. We can add it up. So, we get 7 plus 2 root 10. Part 4. Again, if I see this is A plus B, A minus B. A plus B, A minus B identity will be A square minus B square. A plus B into A minus B is A square minus B square. So, A plus B, A minus B, A square. This is A, this is B. So, answer will come root 5 square minus root 2 square. That is 5 minus 2. So, we get the answer as 3. So, this is simplification by using Suitable. Here there was no identity. Here, second, third, fourth, we have used identities and solved it. Question number three, recall that pi is the ratio of circumference by diameter, right? How do we get this? We know that circumference is 2 pi r, right? We know this formula, circumference is 2 pi r. So, in a circle, we know that this is radius, this is radius. So, 2r is equal to actually diameter. So, here we are two, having 2r. So, circumference can be replaced with, instead of 2R, I can write it as D. So, I am going to get pi D. And that is why we are getting this formula, pi is circumference by diameter. Now, in my last video, I had explained that whenever we are having a fraction, this is a fraction, right? It's a rational number. All fractions are rational. Now, here, this seems to contradict the fact that pi is irrational. We know that the actual value of pi is irrational. Can you solve this contradiction? This is the question. Contradiction means there is a 
a mismatch in what we are saying here because according to this, this should be rational. But actual value of pi is irrational. So how is it that when pi is a fraction, circumference by diameter, then actually it should have been rational. But we say that pi is irrational. And that is why they are asking why is this happening? The reason is very simple because how do we measure circumference? We cannot measure the circumference with a scale, right? Because circumference is circle. So what we do is we'll take a thread and put it along the boundary of a circle and then we'll straighten the uh, thread and measure the length of the thread that will be the circumference. And even if you are going to measure the diameter, we are measuring with the scale, yes, but we are not going to get an accurate value. We are only getting approximate values. So the thread method is also approximate. The diameter is also approximate. So the value that we are taking actually pi 22 by 7 is only an approximate value and not exact. So 22 by 7 is rational. 3.14 is rational, but the actual value of pi is irrational. So don't get confused that 22 by 7 is, uh, we cannot say it's irrational. Okay, 22 by 7 is rational. 3.14 is rational, but the actual value of pi is irrational. So there is no contradiction. There is no contradiction. Why? Because the value of circumference and diameter that we are taking are only approximate and not exact. That is the answer that you have to give here. Then question number four, this is represent root 9.3 on the number line. So how to root represent that? I'm just explaining. So represent root 9.3 on the number line. So whenever we want to represent any number on the number line, we are going to write it as 9.3 into 1. So suppose it is 4.5, we will write 4.5 into 1. So this is the standard procedure always. Now this is our number line. Okay, we are going to divide it into equal parts, right? And 9.3 into 1. So this is my number line starting from 0 going up to infinity, right? But I'm not going to write all because I know the value of root 9.3. What is root 9.3? So root 9.3 will be somewhere between 3 and 4. I know that my answer will come somewhere between 3 and 4. So what I need to do is I am going to, I'm just going to find the value of root 9.3 on the number line. So this can be used for any number that is in the roots. This method can be used. So 9.3, I'm going to take 9.3 here. So on with the help of a scale, just take out 9.3 here. So this length from here to here, you will take 9.3 centimeter. Okay, on the left side. And this is one centimeter. I'm going to take one centimeter here. So this point I'm going to take as B. So what is my A? A is 9.3 to the left. And what is B? One to the right of zero. So this is my central point. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to draw the perpendicular bisector of AB with the compass. How do you draw perpendicular bisector? By taking radius more than half. So from A and B, you will open out the compass. If the compass is not opened, it is less than half, then the arcs will not cut. So that will become wrong, right? So you need to open out the compass to more than half. So this is approximately half, more than half. And keep your compass at A and B, not at A and this point zero. So many people do it from A and zero and get, get wrong. So don't do it from there. You have to take A and B. From A and B, you are going to cut. From A and B, taking radius more than half. From A, I'm going to take the compass, cut and R. From B, don't change the radius, cut. From A, you're going to cut. From B, you are going to cut. I'm cutting from A and B. Again, I'm repeating this. And then I'm going to join this. When I'm going to join this, this is the perpendicular bisector of AB. This is going to be the midpoint M. This is going to be the midpoint of AB as M. M is the midpoint here. Now keep the compass here. Take radius MA and draw a semicircle. So you are going to get a semicircle like this, which is going to pass through A and B. So M is the midpoint of AB. So obviously, if I take MA radius, it's going to pass through AB. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to keep the compass at zero. And I'm going to construct 90 degrees here. So how to construct 90? Take any radius, draw an arc here with the compass. Then without changing the radius, cut from here, cut an arc. 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 Right? You already know how to construct 90. 
take any radius, draw the arc without changing the radius. From here, you are getting one point. From here, you are cutting one point. Then again, you are cutting from here and here. And this, you are going to extend till it touches the semicircle. So let us assume that this point is B. Now, what are we going to do? Keep the compass at zero and open out your compass till it reaches point P. Okay, that is the point on the semicircle. And then what you do, slowly you are going to bring this downwards. So with the compass, you are going to just bring this downwards till it intersects the number line. So as I said, root 9.3 will be slightly beyond 3. It will be 3, between 3 and 4, but very close to 3. So this is what I'm getting here. So this value, wherever it intersects the number line, is going to give me root 9.3. So this you can have to do with compass and scale and uh, you will get uh, the value of the rational number root 9.3 on the number line. Then we go to question number five. So question number five is rationalization. Now what is the meaning of rationalizing the denominator? That means the denominator should be free of roots. Here there is a root seven. So what I need to do is if there is a single number is very simple. Multiply and divide by the same number. Just multiply and divide by the same number. So when I multiply and divide by the same number, I'm going to get root 7 and root 7 into 7, root 7 will become 7. So what have we done? We have just multiplied and divided by the same number. And because of this, what is happening is that the root goes away and that is called rationalization. Rationalization means the denominator is free of roots. So answer of the first one will be root 7 by 7. In the second one, what we need to understand is that it's not a single number like this. This is a double number. So we will multiply and divide by the same number, but with opposite sign in between. I'm going to multiply and divide by root 7 plus root 6. So this was minus. I'm multiplying and dividing by the opposite sign. If it is plus, it, this will become minus. If this is minus, this will become plus. So 1 into anything is the number itself. So this will be root 7 plus root 6. And denominator will always be in the form of a minus b, a plus b. And a minus b, a plus b is a square minus b square. So here you will get root 7 square minus root 6 square. So this will be root 7 plus root 6. Root 7 square will become 7. Root 6 square will become 6. So what is the answer? Root 7 plus root 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. So it's optional to write the 1 in the denominator. So final answer you will get root 7 plus root 6. Right? So you got the method to solve. If there is a single number, just multiply and divide by the same number. If there are two numbers, multiply and divide by the conjugate or the opposite number sign uh, of the denominator. Let's try 1 by root 5 plus root 2. Same procedure as second. Multiply and divide by the opposite sign. So we are going to get root 5 minus root 2. Right? So 1 multiplied by anything is the number itself. We get root 5 minus root 2. Denominator a plus b, a minus b, you will get a square minus b square. So what is the answer that we get? Root 5 minus root 2. Root 5 square, we get 5. Root 2 square, we get 2. So what is happening here? 5 minus 2, we get 3. So answer is root 5 minus root 2 upon 3. So this is the answer to part 3. And then we have the final one, that is 1 upon root 7 minus 2. 1 upon root 7 minus 2. Multiply and divide by, again, opposite sign. That is, multiply and divide by root 7 plus 2. 1 into anything is the number itself. So, numerator will remain as it is, root 7 plus 2. And denominator in the form of a minus b, a plus b, that is a square minus b square. So root 7 square minus 2 square. So answer will be root 7 plus 2. No change in the numerator and denominator. Root 7 square is 7 and 2 square is 4. Okay, remember this is not root 2. This is only 2. So 2 square is 4. So 7 minus 4 will get 3. So answer will be root 7 plus 2 upon 3. Okay, so this is a simple exercise based on rationalization and you can practice representation of numbers on the number line. Go through the solved examples also so that you get better practice in this. Uh, so in the next video, I'll be explaining the 
lots of experience.